So uh, generally you can able to see api.salesforce.com might be you can see like a cs23.salesforce.com that was the links always difference. AP means area specific, 8th is a server location. So whenever there is any updates, your locations will get update automatically. Instead of AP8, next time I will get AP27. Right, whenever any release, the URL will go to update. Let's say the only issues if you are doing with integrations or if you are providing, like if you are connecting with any third party applications using your endpoint URLs. It's always mandatory that you need to update every point of time because uh, the location will change from a Salesforce site. To avoid such issues, we can create our own domain which is a common constant for all the time. So to create a domain, you have an option called setup and then you have a my domains. We have my domains. In my domain, you can check availability of your domain name. This is a one time. Once you create a domain, it cannot be irre irreversible process. Once done, done. We can't reverse it back, okay? Available. I'm just registering my domain. So it just take two to three minutes uh, to register. Meanwhile, I'll log into my console.cloud.gmail.com control shift n console.cloud.google.com I'm just refreshing. Not it. So this is a URL, I mean console.cloud.google.com is a uh, cloud platform, Google cloud platform. Like Salesforce we had, uh, Google ha providing a free cloud platform for users, okay. So you can consume the Google cloud platform to authenticate a Salesforce, I mean uh, authentication providers. To do that, uh, let me go here back. I mean, this will be my URL, okay. So it just takes time. Gmail. Okay, so, oh, okay. Now it got registered. Now, first time when it is registered for the first time, you need to log in. You need to log in to test. First, you need to click on login. You can see the URL is updated to BA50, right? Yes, Deepak. Yeah. And then once it is successfully, you can able to log in and then deploy to users. Deploy to users. Now it has been deployed to all users. Now I'll show you. I'll take up into the new incognito. I'm just entering. Still, it is not sounding like it is coming as my own page. So let's say here they are giving the company. I mean their information. So what we can do? We can edit the login page. We can edit. 
we can edit login page type standard discovery login header i mean hand let's say this is so we need to write a custom code there so we can upload our images let's say i'll say okay downloads photos i'm just saying let's let okay. image size exceeds the maximum okay they have the dimensions okay so if you can provide that dimensions and you can customize your color what color you wanted and right frame url i'm just customizing it see now what happened you can see the same way you can change your logo even the same way you can change your logo even here the right side frame url is also updated right yeah yeah this you can get after uh, enabling a domain after enabling a domain good morning hemant Good morning, Deepak. I was there in call already. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Now, more than that, the problem here is, uh, let's say, login. Always using a login is a problem for me. So, generally, as a company employee, whenever I click on this link, say, let's say, get back to your CRM. If I click with the, my email and my username only, it need to authenticate instead of having my username separately. I mean, we are using SSO, right? Single sign-on settings always. SSO login, single sign-on. So here what I'll do, I'll take a Google Gmail help, I mean Google Cloud Platform help to do a that setup, authentication providers. So in setup, we have an option like auth providers. In that, create a new auth provider. Select the Google is the authentication provider. We have so many things like we have Facebook, Jenny Rama, Salesforce, Another sales was open ID, Microsoft Access, Twitter link. You think we have a Google and I'll say that login with Google. Customer key, customer secret, you will not get it here. So first you need to get a authentication app created. So what I'll do, I'll creating a new project. I'll creating a new project. Salesforce login and no need to select any organization in Google Cloud Platform, just create. Once you are here, where it's creating Salesforce login. The URL is console.cloud.google.com. So project has been created. So select your project. Once it is created, now go to the APIs, credentials, now before creating credentials, you need to go to auth context screens, your application logo is, name is Salesforce login. Application logo is optional. and here you can see scope for Google APIs is email, profile and open ID, right? Email, profile and open ID. So let me go to this one. Default scopes, open ID, email, profile. So these scopes you are getting from here. You have to go with a reverse direction. When you are entering any scopes, uh, in the uh, the consumer side you need to go in the reverse direction open id profile email so the other one yeah authorize the domains what is the domain that we are using here now va50 we need to authorize domains domain must be specified protocol yes what is then save we need to do few things only this uh, app name we need to provide app name we need to take the google api scopes to the authentication provider and then we need to authorize a domain called salesforce once that is done go to the credentials create a auth client id 
what application Salesforce is a web application. So click on web application. Let's say BA50 is my login. So we don't have authorized JavaScript origins or nothing. Just create. After providing a name, no need to do anything. Just click on create. It will create a client ID and client secret. Now take this client ID, go to your Salesforce, paste it in a client key. Take customer client secret, paste it in a customer secret. Done. And click automatically create a register handler. This is a Salesforce Apex class. And logout URL you can take always like BA50. And register handler as so first we need to execute this as a system administrator. So I'm executing SFTC BA. And icon URL you can choose one. So because this is Google, let me take it off this URL. Control A, Control C, close, save. Once that is done, you have a authentication callback URL. Copy this callback URL. Once you successfully save these URLs, you create automatically. Copy. Okay. Click edit of your the one you created. Click edit on it and provide authorized redirect URLs. Enter. You need to click a enter, not a OK. Once you enter, this will be saved and then you need to click on save. So now we can see everything is set up is done. We need to understand the callbacks, whether it is working or not working. So we have a callback URL to test only, initializing. So this is the URL. Take this URL, go to your developer console. I mean your browser, enter, execute. So I'm signing in. Now it means that it is getting a successfully. So only you are getting like uh, Salesforce present, Google, Salesforce and username and email and everything. So now what means it is successfully configured and it is working fine. It is successfully configured and it is working fine. I mean, you are getting a proper response from the Google side. Now, first we need to do a little changes in the controller handler. So I will we'll discuss detail about Apex classes again. So here when user getting created, let's say Aura registered handler, we go to the developer console close close on open resources our RG standard I'll say that Google login is my class name so here I have a data let's say I'm just removing it this method I'm deleting. User select ID from profile where I'll go with users. SFTCBA. Return user, return else so we don't need data dot email and everything is fine say slash stop stop slash return ID from user where user name equal to b underscore fifty eight present dot com only if I log in using equal to equal to 
my dot Lakshmi Deepak set gmail dot com or email equal to equal to Rajan Salesforce at gmail dot com. What's your email ID, please? Sharon, yeah? Yes, um, it's going yeah, text, text me your email ID, please. Yeah, sure. Hemant, your email ID too. So now we need to modify little changes. Still, we know I need to have a button saying that login with Google here. So still we need to modify our domain. Still we need to modify our domain. Domain. Here we can see. Edit. Uh, login with Google. Either if you want to use login form or login with Google. So I'm just removing that. I'm making it as a login form. What happened on that? Edit. See. Rajan Salesforce at gmail.com. Login with Google. You can't log in because the following is contact your sales was no unable to find user va 58 com. Okay, L is missing. Gmail, L is missing. No refresh it. Okay. Alright, so time. Login with Google. No, it will log in automatically to your user, either for you and this one. So now what happened? So now we enable as a authentication provider through Google, right? If you want, you can verify the URL is BA50. If you think that need to be verified, that you can also verify using this URL. So all you need to use BA50 iPhone dev iPhone ed dot my dot salesforce dot com it helps you to log in. Clear? You wanted me to explain again, or is that fine? Uh, I'm clear, data. Yeah. Okay, Sharon, yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, clear, uh, Deepak. Okay. So, there are a few topics which is left, like communities. We have communities in available in Salesforce. We need to enable community. The only problem, the communities has, before it was like a straight forward that you will be using your st Salesforce standard objects and you will be exposing these to a partner users. But uh, Salesforce is where, I mean, Salesforce communities has been developed. I mean, it have it, it got an updates in a way that we need to have a lightning components or a visual force pages need to be created. I mean, I mean, extensively it is more into customization solution for the communities we have now. Okay. Uh, and uh, we have another one called visual flows. Flows we have in Salesforce, which is the latest version, came up with a Salesforce that uh, before Visual Force, the area is that before Visual Force pages, we had a flows to give a screen by screen solutions for the users. Now, even flows has been updated to an extent that it is capable to do all lightning futures. Lightning futures in the sense it helps, I mean, whenever you are creating a process builder. You can always invoke your visual flow, which will continue your operations, the complex logic into going further. Okay. So the visual flows and communities we will be discussing in line with that development because uh, here we need development skills for a flows and uh, communities. Communities extensively needed your lightning components. Visual flows needed understanding about Salesforce queries, Salesforce object relationship and how to extract a data from an object and correlations so this is needed so it have a little dependency with the development concepts okay hello uh, yes, yes yeah so now uh, yeah domain and uh, authentication is created not only with the google you can also try with auth providers using your open id or you can try with your facebook or you can try with LinkedIn and you can do these are the Facebook you can do LinkedIn you can try Twitter you can try github you also you can try which is available free of cost again so you don't want to pay anything for this LinkedIn Twitter Google github Salesforce and Facebook are free that you can be able to authenticate you don't need to pay anything it's a free so if you want to try more about authentication providers you can try with these links okay Facebook, so we have developer.facebook.com is a platform. They will provide a Google, I mean, client ID, client secret, and redirections, everything. Whereas GitHub also have developer.github and Twitter have Twitter API. LinkedIn have, I don't know, LinkedIn I never tried till now, but uh, they have their own API. Let's say LinkedIn API login, okay. Okay. linkedin.com dot developer slash developers is the API so which helps uh, you to continue for the LinkedIn authentication okay so what are the two I mean what are the relationships we have in Salesforce what are the relationships we have in Salesforce master detail lookup okay so account is a standard object or a custom object standard okay whenever we're working with the standard objects so whatever you are seeing is not real here let's say i'm going few fields whatever you are going to get information from this is not actually real this is not a real field names and real field values billing address and shipping address you are having but actually if you go to the account billing address is not the one field right if i click edit the record it have a compound field like a street city state and provisions right Mm -hmm. So whenever you're working with a standard object, my recommendation is that go to the Google, go to the Google and your object name is SOAP API, your object name is SOAP API, nothing else you need to search and then you will be having a standard documentation which will open from a developer.salesforce.com which is Salesforce authorized documents for a API specific so once you have been whatever you wanted to access in the custom of standard object of account you have to access from your account number you have account source the same way we have a billing address and they are saying 
the compound object is nothing but a billing address read only address compound fields for the details of compound so you have billing address in that what and all you have billing city billing country billing country code billing geo code accuracy billing latitude longitude so all this information is not available in the standard object account field the one you are seeing within the salesforce right for always the standard yeah. objects better to recommend i recommend you to re refer the document called soap api developer guide which is salesforce provided documentation for a standard functionality so you have everything available i mean billing state billing street and everything these fields are not available as opted out of email so you can see there is no such field available in account object but there is a field which is available in soap documentation it means that the particular contact doesn't want to receive email from salesforce true label email opt out so is something like which are hidden fields which is not available straight away in the object okay clear yeah yeah yes sir in salesforce we have three different types of queries in salesforce we have three different queries simple soql parent to child soql and child to parent soql we have three different queries one is child to parent parent to child and simple soql query so we'll say a simple soql query generally in database how you will write a extract a data so you will say right to retrieve yeah yeah select yeah, star from select. table name right yes here table name is nothing but your object name so account but unfortunately you can't use asterisk symbol here you have to mention your field names you have to mention your field names building city i wanted to get only those information where building city is not equal to null so we have a where class saying that where building city not equal to null so what is the difference between single quotes and uh, not equal to null you got same data only again right but what is the difference between using a null and single quotes okay null means there is no memory there is no memory allocated a single quotes means there is a memory but there is no value in it okay it's as same as saying it is empty and it is vacuum both i have nothing but the vacuum doesn't even have a air in it there is no space at all right yes tika exactly so null is something like a vacuum where it doesn't have a memory but with a, just a single quote it always refers it have a memory but there is no value in it i mean system yeah. will allocate some memory for it if you, for to store a value but there is no value but null in the sense not even a memory it's, it it doesn't exist now in okay i hope you are very strong in i mean you guys are strong in your queries now uh, let me ask you i wanted to retrieve last two rows i wanted to retrieve only last two rows instead of uh, this one how to get there i wanted to retrieve only last two rows what is the syntax that you can retrieve last two rows i think we should write inner query inner query sense um uh, i mean which technology i mean in sqql we have like a last rows there is a standard column value saying that last rows equal to last rows to something you have like this okay but in salesforce we can't do that but let's say i wanted to retrieve the next two records i wanted to retrieve next two records instead of first two 
Okay. If I say limit two, it will retrieve first two, right? Yes. Yeah. Now I wanted to retrieve the next two. So we have an option called offset. Offset two means number of records to be skipped from the top row. Offset means okay. number of records to be skipped from the top row. If I skip two next two rows, it means I'll get the next row is Singapore and Austrian, right? Execute. Okay, one minute. There is no order. What we got it now? La Paris and Lawrence. Paris and Lawrence. So Singapore and Austrian. Okay. Now I think we need to go with a sort by sort by order by building city ASC. Okay, Austrian building city. This one, and then I'm saying limit to. And then I'll say offset two. Now Austrian Brinkton, Chicago and Lawrence. Austrian Brinkton is the first record. Then I'm skipping my two records, offset equal to, and then Chicago and Lawrence, right? But here the limitation is that you can do offset value only 2000. Offset you can do only up to 2000 records. You can't skip more than 2000 records. Clear? Hello? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Offset is only 2000 is the last number that you can have. After 2000 records, it will system will not allow you to skip more than 2000 rows. Okay? It's a limitation in Salesforce SOQL query. It's a limitation we have in Salesforce SOQL query. Clear? Yes. Yes. What is the relationship between account and contact? What is the relationship between account and contact? We have a relationship called lookup relationship, right? I'm going to contact fields. We can say account name is a lookup to account, right? Yep. Yeah. So whenever you are writing a child to parent query, I mean for one account, how many contacts you can have? Many. I mean more than one, right? Yeah. So if you have more than one in the data, it means that you need to access with a query. Then only you will get all the details, right? More than one record, you need to query always. Now the yes. requirement is that I wanted to access my child records within my parent. So here we need to write a inner query. We need to write a inner query. Inner query in the sense, I need to write a query on my object. <laughs> Select ID comma name comma here. I need to write my inner query saying that select ID comma name from contact in which object I need to retrieve account from account. I need to retrieve here. I need to retrieve from contact, but the problem is that we need to mention a relationship, right? We have so many relationships. But we need to mention a relationship based on which relationship I need to relate it data. Clear? I need to mention a relationship. For that, what we need, when you are writing your inner query, you need to utilize child relationship name. What you need to utilize? Child, child. relationship name. Where you will get, if you go to your child object, if you go to your child object, in my case, the child object is contact. I will go inside this one, the field of relationship, if I open my relationship field, then I'll find my relationship name. Then I will find my child relationship name. You have to use child relationship name when you are querying your Salesforce object data. Now you can see a data which is coming from contact. It is more than one record, so it is displaying like an array. This is an array, right? ID comma name, and then it is next yeah. record. This is an array. So this is for a standard. What a good custom. We have a demo manager, right? Which is a master detail to an account, which I have a relationship, right? Yeah. Yeah. So how to do with a master detail? So all you need to go to account name, again, the relationship name, 
but the only difference here is you need to copy the child relationship name here child relationship name because this is a custom field or a standard field that's a custom field custom field whenever you are finding any custom field you need to append with double underscore r if it is a relationship yeah what you need to do you need to append with a double underscore r r demo manager id from name okay one minute from ko clear on the right okay why it is not coming i need to append with the namespace sorry because we have a namespace available we need to append the namespace yesterday we created right we need to append namespace that was the issue now you can see there is a data now you are getting it yes yeah we need yeah. to append whenever there is a namespace available standard for standard one you can't have a namespace for the custom one you will be having a namespace so you need to utilize the namespace prefix how to use namespace double underscore and the field name and the double underscore r so how to do a inner queries i mean on what basis you need to query a data child to parent based on child relationship name based on child relationship Name, clear? Yes. Yes, Deepak. Yeah. Now we have other query called parent to child. Parent information inside child query. Let's say I wanted to get my account information in my contact query, child query, right? How many parents you will be having for one 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 child? How many parents you will be having? Only one parent, right? Yeah. so we need to say select id comma name comma i need to get my account phone number i need to get my account phone number or account name so all you need to go to your contact fields let's say i'm going to contact fields you have to open your field name you need to use your field name what you need to use you need to use your field name dot name comma account dot phone comma account id comma account dot id now tell me what is difference between account id and account dot id account id what is difference between account id and account dot id Account ID is like a local. Ah, uh, uh, contact local. contact column name and account ID is a account object uh, column name. But values are same. But values are same again. You can see the values are same. Where this is a foreign value. Account dot ID is a foreign value. If I start trying to edit, it says that not to edit. If I edit a local value, it allows me to edit. Account dot name is a account object field. Account object field. Account object field. This is a contact field. Clear? Yes, Deepak. Now, how to get there? You need to use your field name. You need to use field name dot parent field parent object field names. Clear? Yeah. Yeah. If it is a if it is a child to parent, then you need to use child relationship name. Then you need to use child relationship name. the same thing if i want to query from the standard objects i mean if i want to query from the custom object then if i want to query my object account information from custom object then you need to use same thing from this one and you need to go to the be account name not equal to null not equal to null and here as same as instead of account you need to use underscore underscore r whenever you are talking about relationship what we need to use we need to use underscore underscore r clear yes yeah if it is a field straight field then fine if it is a relationship in a custom field you need to use underscore underscore r that's it 
execute so account dot id where account that here it is you got it yeah so if it is a relationship and ensure that you need to use a tag called underscore underscore r if it is just a field that you are referring as is common field then you need to use underscore underscore c with followed with a namespace if it is available namespace is available then you need to follow with your this one okay